Welcome to RCR Wireless News. I'm Martha DeGrasse, and I'm here with Dave Nowicki. He is CMO of DeviceScape. Thanks for joining me, Dave. Thanks very much. Great to be here. Well, we're here at T3 in Silicon Valley, where a lot of software companies are pitching the carriers on different solutions. Yours is a Wi-Fi offload solution, which is very important to carriers right now. So tell us a little bit about what the curated virtual network is. Sure. So we have a curator service, and what it does is we curate and automate Wi-Fi. And that can be any kind of Wi-Fi. It can be carrier-deployed Wi-Fi. It can be amenity-based Wi-Fi, which is the Wi-Fi that venue owners actually put into their shops and want people to use. So the biggest problem with Wi-Fi is you don't know what quality you're going to get. So we provide a quality-controlled layer to all of that. That's what the curation process is all about. And that's all boiled up into what's called the curated virtual network. And the curated virtual network right now is 16 million hotspots strong out of a total of 250 million that we're monitoring worldwide. We have a crowdsourcing mechanism in our handsets and what's happening is the handsets are constantly finding new Wi-Fi as people connect to the Wi-Fi and it's being qualified for quality and popularity and reliability in, in various kinds of uh, parameters to make sure that it should be included in this curated set and then that is a service that we offer to mobile operators in terms of them being able to keep their users always best connected. Are most of these hotspots um, password protected or not? So it really depends upon the carrier deployment. So a carrier could say to us um, that they want to do just their own carrier Wi-Fi. Okay, and in that case, it would all be encrypted and so forth. Or the carrier could say, no, I'm already doing something with my carrier Wi-Fi. What I want to do is have capacity reach and extend my network into all of the public Wi-Fi and amenity Wi-Fi. Most of that uh, depends on the country, okay? So most of it in the U.S. Um, is open or captive portal based. It actually breaks down in terms of the way chains and independents do things. But a lot of it is, is that something you can get onto uh, pretty easily. Um, but we automate that process. Oftentimes it's a captive portal where you have to accept terms and conditions and so forth. There are a number of restaurants and certain kind of businesses out there that still have a password and that password could be in two different types, but that's also something that we incorporate into our service as well. Uh, we have a service called Pop Wi-Fi that we provide to the venue owners and that allows them to actually distribute the password through the portal um, on their account, on their account to, uh, to users through the software. Um, so that's another way that the curated virtual network gets bigger. So from the user's perspective, that they have not entered a password, it's done for them through the portal. That's right. So in, 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 in most of the cases, um, what the user would normally do is they would have to find the right SSID uh, to connect to. They would have to then bring up the portal and pinch and zoom, and it's not really formatted correctly. Um, and then they would have to click and, and accept terms and conditions and so forth. So because our client, um, our curator client, is talking to a service platform, effectively what that means is that we can send down the exact instructions of how to make sure that that client connects and stays always best connected. So when you walk into, let's say, Home Depot, Target, Walmart, whatever it happens to be, even, even a small shop, um, you'll automatically be connected. Just walking into the shop, you know, it's still, maybe the phone's still in your pocket. Um, when you take it out, you're already connected and ready to go on the best available network. That's the consumer experience. They don't have to think about what network they're connecting to at any given time. And from the carrier perspective, it um, offloads traffic. Absolutely, but I think more importantly, it keeps the user always best connected. So I think what the carrier is starting to realize is that people actually use more Wi-Fi than they use cellular in general. What that means is that as the mass market consumer gets a smartphone, they're not so concerned about what network they connect to. So the carrier has to take responsibility for the entire data experience. The in, whether you're on Wi-Fi, whether you're on cellular, they're going to get calls about that. So if we can simplify the getting connected all the time, that cuts down costs for the carrier. And what the message they can give to their users is, we're going to keep you connected in the places you want to stay connected and just make it easier for you. So how many carriers are working with you now? Uh, we have more than 10 carriers uh, worldwide. So one of our first customers was Metro PCS. They've been acquired now by T-Mobile. Uh, we're also working with uh, US Cellular. Um, we're working with Republic Wireless that has a great, you know, very disruptive model. Um, we just also recently signed um, Cricket Wireless, Leap Wireless, um, and so that's something we've been doing now for a couple of months and now we're able to talk about it, which is terrific, um, but we've already deployed on many of their handsets. Um, we also just signed a deal with the CCA, uh, which is going to allow us to have a common structure to talk to a lot of the rural carriers. The reason this is so great for a rural or regional carrier is because our network grows organically 
right where it needs to grow. It grows where the users are, and so that's a perfect way for a regional rural carrier to actually extend the reach, capacity reach of their network. For the big nationwide carriers, it's more about being able to connect indoors and so forth where you don't necessarily have a network or maybe being able to extend and roam in other countries. Um, we're also working, uh, we also had built a, a product together with Microsoft that was exclusively licensed to Verizon Wireless. Um, so they're using the data as a feed as well. Um, and we're embedded inside of Intel laptops. Um, so Ultrabooks and so forth are connecting using our service as well. Um, so there's a number of places where we're deployed. Uh, we have a carrier, uh, Bouygues Telecom in France, Public Mobile in Canada. We're also on the verge of uh, making another announcement in Europe, as well as uh, one here um, in the U.S., which will happen in just a couple of months. Okay, and you mentioned, what, 250 million hotspots? That yes. You're okay, that we're monitoring. That you're monitoring, right. right. And a much smaller portion are actually in the network. But do you need to reach out to all types of like small business owners and how do you maintain all those different relationships to find so out about all those hotspots? It's a great question and because it's a crowdsourcing mechanism, we're relying on the crowd and we're relying on technology and services. So we don't individually talk to all the venue owners, there would be no way to do that because the network is, is far too big, right? So we have different mechanisms for that. Um, first of all, the, the, the basic way is that when people just connect, the venue owner likes that because people are getting connected fast and they don't have to become an IT manager, they don't have to manage the password, they don't have to manage anything. Secondly, we provide a service called Pop Wi-Fi and the Pop Wi-Fi service is really an experience manager for the venue owner. So what that means is that the venue owner can take Pop Wi-Fi and they can see the quality of their Wi-Fi in the store. Okay, They can also send messages in terms of passive notification to the people in the shop. Um, and they can also distribute their password, as I mentioned. So the point is that the venue owner is getting a benefit out of their Wi-Fi, much more so than before. And so as a result, that means that they're more engaged with the network, right? So, so we work with them through that service, right? But it's very much them interacting with our portal and so forth, as opposed to us having feet on the street and and and, and talking to each one of these vendors. The vendors that were, I'm sorry, the ve the venue owners that we do talk to are people that we have in our trials and so forth, where we have a rich discussion with them to try to figure out what the requirements are for the next version and so forth. So we are engaged with a lot of the venue owners, but obviously can't get to all the ones, so have to do that through our product. Got it. All right, Dave Nowicki, DeviceScape. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Thanks very much, Martha.